All right, it's 12.05. I think I'll go ahead and get us started. Um, thank you everyone for being here. Um, welcome to the Regional Officer Onboarding Webinar. I would first just like to say congratulations to all of our newly elected regional officers who are here today. Um, you have an exciting year ahead of you, and I'm really looking forward to seeing all the work that you guys get done this year. So our goal for today's webinar is to really give all of you, a, you new incoming regional officers, a solid introduction to what your role is, as well as giving you the chance to hear from some current regional officers about some advice and insights that they have gained along their time in their position this past year. And we'll also have a question and answer portion where you'll be able to ask our presenters any questions that you may have about your specific position or really anything about the SSCCC in general. So we just, we really hope that this webinar will help you feel more prepared and confident as you begin your role in July, which is really soon, it's around the corner. So I just wanna say congratulations again and let's get started. So with that, I'm going to move into our housekeeping slide real quick before I pass it to our first presenters. So this session will be recorded and it will be available on the SSCCC YouTube channel after the event. Um, our executive director will upload it um, as soon as possible and live captioning is also available. And we also have an ASL interpreter available um, today. Um, shout out to Chris. Thank you so much for being here. And then the best view is via the presenter view by clicking on view in the right hand corner and selecting presenter view. And then we will have a Q&A session um, of this webinar at the very end where you will have the chance to ask any questions that you may have from for any of our presenters. Um, so um, please hold your questions until then and we'll make sure to get to all of them. And also feel free to share your experience with us via social media. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and get right into our webinar and I'll pass it to our current SSCCC president, Stephen Coder, to give us kind of an introduction and congratulation message. Thank you so much, Emma. I just want to start first by just saying congratulations to each of you um, that are on this call and, and those that are watching uh, later on. Um, you know, this is this is a start of a brand new chapter in your life. Uh, I would say that the SSCCC uh, has, has played a significant role in my life, and I hope that it does the same for you. Um, I have been in your position before. Uh, before I became president of the SSCCC, I was a delegate, I was a RAD. Um, so, you know, I, I know what it feels like to have so many questions and, and really like, um, you know, an, an uneasiness, you know, going into this new year. So uh, I just want to thank everyone that's, that's putting this, uh, this webinar together, because this is definitely a step in the right direction to get you prepared for this next year. Um, you know, the SSCCC, has so many different positions that you can fill, you know, whether you're a treasurer, a rad, you know, a lad, whatever it is. Um, but, you know, and each one has different uh, duties, but one common denominator that you have is that you are the voice of students. Um, so, you know, make sure that you are plugging in with students on a daily basis. The SSCCC was doing that this over the course of this last year. Um, and we were really trying to um, you know, meet the students' needs. So we we focus on things like racial equity and um, you know basic needs. So you know, over the course of this next year, definitely tune into your students. Um, you know, and in, into your peers. Um, and I, I, you know, wish you the best of luck over the, the over the course of this next year. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see you. All right, thank you, Stephen. Um, and with that, we'll go ahead and pass it to Gerardo our incoming SSCCC president for the upcoming term. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to, uh, to be here. Um, it's a pleasure to be among you. Uh, welcome to the SSCCC for the 2021 and 2022 term. Um, this year, we have so many obstacles because of the pandemic. Um, and we're very fortunate that we're transitioning to a time where uh, you know, we are able to engage with students uh, like how we did before. Uh, we're going to be able to start visiting campuses uh, because colleges are opening up. Uh, but that means that, you know, we still have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, so I want to encourage you to, you know, get involved with the SSCCC more uh, than you're already expecting to. 
um, the SSCCC is a great opportunity for you to use your platform and to uplift others. Um, you're going to know that you're going to realize that uh, besides your leadership skills, besides the parliamentary procedure and Brown Act uh, legislative uh, expertise that you're going to gain, uh, above all that, your voice as a student leader is the most valuable thing that you have. It is the most powerful weapon that you have in your disposal. So I want to encourage you to use it throughout the year. Uh, whenever you go to a committee, use your voice. Don't stay silent. Uh, you were elected by your students to be their representative. Uh, whenever you go to a space with faculty, staff, college administrators, use your voice to uplift yourself, uplift others. Uh, think about the students who are underrepresented. Um, think about them. Uh, we are here to serve all students. We have 2.1 million students. Um, and you're going to get to know our mission. Um, and it is my hope that you are inspired by our mission. Um, you know, we have a great year ahead of us. We have a lot of work to do. And simply, you know, I just want to wish you the best of luck. I want to wish you the best in your work that you're going to be doing uh, within your regions. Uh, but most of all, uh, throughout your journey with the SSCCC and uh, before we continue with our webinar, please know that I'm here uh, to support you. I'm here to be at your service. Um, all the VPs are here to be your support system, and please feel free to reach out to us. Um, as cliche as it sounds, uh, there are no stupid questions. Uh, we are here to support you. You know, we've been through what you're going to go through, uh, like Stephen's, you know, journey throughout the SCCC. Um, I have the same experience. I started as a delegate in 2019. Uh, then I became a rad, and now I got elected president. Uh, so I've been through that situation. I've been through that. Uh, you know what? You don't know what to expect in your position. Uh, but by taking this step um, in your journey, you're gonna gain a lot, um, and you're gonna transform into a powerful leader uh, more than you already are. So. Just have patience with the process, and I wish you all the best in this upcoming year. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Jardo. Uh, thank you to both of our presidents for coming and speaking to us today. Um, thank you for the words. Um, you are all amazing, and we appreciate you. All right. So with that, we'll move into our next portion of our webinar, which is an introduction to the SSCCC. Um, some of you have already been involved with the SSCCC. You may already know um, a little bit about us and how we work. Um, and then some of you, this may be your first time ever working with SSCCC, ever being involved with us. So we just wanted to provide um, a nice detailed um, kind of introduction to the SSCCC and how we work, um, our committees, our structure, um, what we do. And so here to do that for us today is Catherine Squire. She is our current SSCCC Vice President, and I'll go ahead and pass it to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Emma. Um, and I'm so happy to be here with everyone. My name is Catherine Squire and I'm also the outgoing vice president. Um, so we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. So what is the SSCCC? Um, so the SSCCC stands for the Student Senate for California Community Colleges. Um, we are a recognized nonprofit organization. Uh, we're also entirely student led. So our members are students. Uh, we also do have the help of staff as well. Um, but we represent the over 2.1 million students in our California community colleges. Um, and it is through us that students have a formal and effective opportunity to participate in the formation of state policies um, that have a significant impact on students. So um, this is really our opportunity to make a change, especially for all of you that have just been elected into, into positions. Um, you're, you're really in a good place to, to be able to make change, to be able to affect our legislator and the laws that come out of it. Um, also the work we do with system partners. So those are all ways that you will have the opportunity to participate this year. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> now getting into a little bit of our purpose, authority and direction. Uh, our purpose, and this is also our mission statement is to improve student access, promote student success, uh, engage and empower local student leaders and enrich the collegiate experience for all California community college students. Um, so although we do do a lot of work statewide um, and work with system partners, we also, um, and one of our aims is also to empower you on your local campus as well, um, as you'll see later on. 
Um, our authority, our powers are derived from Title V of the California Code of Regulations and California, California Education Code. Um, so our nonprofit is ingrained in state law. Um, that is the reason why we exist. Um, and our direction, where does our direction come from? So we have a resolution process um, in which students participate every year. They write resolutions on different issues that affect them on their campuses and in their regions. Um, and so the ones that get passed at our General Assembly conference every year are the ones that really provide direction for us to act on your behalf. Um, so that is overall really what creates our vision and our overarching direction. Next slide, please. Um, now getting a little bit into our structure. So we do a, a variety of things. We have um, system advocacy. And so part of system advocacy is providing recommendations on policy decisions that impact us. Um, we do this in a variety of ways, but one main way is having, um, is appointing students to over 25 of our participatory governance groups. Um, so these governance groups include committees uh, that we have partnerships with, with other groups like faculty, academic senate, um, uh, other administrators as well, also with the state legislator. Um, and these all focus on different issues ranging from basic needs to uh, financial equity um, and it, just a variety, of, a host of different issues that these groups cover. And so um, that's one way that students really get involved is for us to appoint, appoint them to those. Uh, we also have legislative advocacy. So we do this by introducing and sponsoring legislative measures. Um, so those are the bills that we work on every year. And these are really based on, in part by the resolutions, but also just by the, the time, um, really what's needed at that, at that time every year. So um, this is the way that we act as the voice of the students at the Capitol. We also do, do, we also do lobby trips. So we send students to the Capitol. Uh, we have our annual lobby, lobby advoca advocacy day, which we just had back in March, uh, or sorry, April as well. So we have one of those every year. Um, and ultimately, we also analyze and advocate for legislative measures affecting students. So we go in and talk to members of the state legislature and the Assembly and Senate um, to try to get them to, to listen to us and to work with us on different bills. All right, and just continuing with the structure, uh, we also provide regional support. So I mentioned that um, we do a lot of things statewide, but we also like to support you on your local campus. Um, and we do this through your regional affairs directors. That's one main way. Um, but we also provide a lot of statewide assistance as well. So we provide resources, training, webinars. Um, this is one of the, one example of that. Um, and just a general support to our student body associations and regions. Um, we engage students in conversations about current issues. So you may receive contact with us throughout the year. Um, just about what's ongoing in your district or your region that we want to know about and that we want to work with you on. Um, and we empower students through policy development, issue discussion, and other venues. Um, so a lot of the times we also have town halls and those are opportunities as well for us to get to connect with you, get to hear your stories and experiences, um, and ultimately take action, right? So uh, moving on. Um, so just to get a little bit into kind of how we're organized. Uh, so we have our board of directors um, and in that board of directors, we have your six uh, executive officers. These are the elected um, by the delegate assembly each year. So we just had an election um, and you have six new members, uh, which we'll introduce in just in a bit. We also have our 10 legislative affairs directors and 10 regional affairs directors. Um, so the titles are kind of self-explanatory. I don't want to go into too much of what they do, um, but they are really uh, for your regional support. So they are elected by your region. Um, each region also has three region officers also elected by your region. So this is your communications officer, um, treasurer, and your vice chair. Um, and then we also have a set of professional staff. Uh, we just got our, our first staff member um, a couple years back, and we are just continually expanding that support. So we are bringing on more staff um, constantly. All right, and this is your incoming executive committee. So these are the six executive members that I just talked about. Um, Gerardo Chavez, who you heard from a little earlier, is your incoming president. Uh, Jane Gaetal is your vice president. 
Brianna Ross is your VPRA or Vice President of Regional Affairs. Uh, Jasmine Prasad is your VPLA or Vice President of Legislative Affairs. Uh, Angelica Campos, Campos is your Vice President of Communications and Faiza Syed is your Vice President of Finance. So um, you can see that each of them kind of has a little specialization in what they do. Um, so for example, your VPLA really helps support your, legisl your Legislative Affairs Director of your region um, and it just continues on from that. All right, now getting a little bit into committees. Uh, we are made up of both regional and statewide committees. So each of your regions has a set of committees, but there are also statewide ones that meet as well. Um, for the statewide ones, we have our executive committee. So those six members I just mentioned sit on that one. Um, our regional affairs committee is for our RATS. Um, same with legislative affairs, that's for your LADS. Uh, equitable practices uh, prioritizes um, just ensuring equity in their organization um, and leading uh, those efforts, a lot of our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. Um, under that committee, we also have two subcommittees. So that is our DEI subcommittee and caucus oversight. Um, we have our resolutions committee, which focuses on educating students and preparing them to write resolutions every year um, in time for general assembly. Um, we have our conference committee. This committee plans our general assembly conference every year. So they really iron out all the details. And then we have our finance and audit committees which focus on making sure that um, our finances and what we're spending our, our money on is transparent and just clear um, and is really in, ensuring the, the best interests of students. All right, and continuing on, uh, for the regional officers, you also have your, your own respective uh, statewide and region committee. So um, we have our communications committee statewide. So all our communications officers sit on that one. And then you take um, that information back to your regional communications committee. So there's two versions of each of these. Um, we have our finance and fundraising. Um, so that is for the treasures. So there's a statewide one and a regional. Um, and then this is a newly formed committee. We did not have one before, but we realized that our vice chairs um, were the only regional officer who did not have their own committee. So this year we wanted to take the initiative to create one. Um, so the internal affairs committee um, is a statewide one. And then there is a, also a regional one. Um, you may rem remember if you were with us from years past that it used to be that the, the regional committee used to be rules and resolutions and so that th all those kind of tasks have now have now moved into internal affairs. All right, and we've also had some other changes with our region reorganization this year at the 2021 General Assembly, our delegates took action to uh, move some colleges around on our map so we have Mendocino College that moved from Region 2 to 1, uh, Santa Rosa Junior College that moved from 3 to 2, Chabot College moved from 4 to 3, and Las Positas College should move from 4 to 3 as well. Uh, and lastly, this is this is the Region's role, um, but basically your, your role as well, right? You're all part of us now. Um, and you're really part of this collective effort to listen to our students, to meet their needs. Um, and so part of your role is to attend regional meetings. Um, your region has a delegate assembly every, every month, but they also have ongoing committee meetings, right? Which you help lead in your region. Um, so that is one, one part of it. En engaging your student body association in conversations and activities. Um, you are really the connection point between us um, and your region's uh, student body association. So it's really important to continually listen to them um, and engage them. Attending General Assembly and other events. Um, we have a, a bunch of events this year, professional development conferences, um, town halls, which will be ongoing. Um, obviously the big one is our General Assembly conference. And then also developing resolutions about local concerns. So as regional officers, you also have the opportunity to write your own resolutions on issues that you care about and that are affecting you on your local campus as well. Um, communicating SSCCC positions to students and administrators to empower the student voice. Um, that is also part and just generally get involved. Um, if there are other opportunities that come up that you want to be a part of, 
uh, don't don't hesitate to speak up. Feel free to ask um, because you know the more participation that we have, that just makes us stronger as an organization. Um, so with that, that really concludes my little intro. I hope this was helpful. I know it can be a lot a lot of information, but just know that we are here to support you in any way possible. Um, even the execs don't hesitate to reach out to them because we we will never be too busy for you. We will always make time. So with that, I'll go ahead and pass it back over to Emma. All right, thank you so much, Catherine. I really hope that helped all of you to have a better idea. Um, even if you are, have already been introduced to the SSCCC, this gave you a much more detailed breakdown. It was a really great presentation. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so yeah, with that, we're going to transition now into our, uh, our third portion of this webinar, which is where we kind of get into the duties of the regional officers. So we're gonna hear from each individual regional officer. We have a regional affairs director here, a legislative affairs director, a vice chair, treasurer, and a comms officer all here to talk to you about kind of the main priorities and duties of their position. And also they're gonna share with you, you know, one piece of advice, at least one. Um, some of them have a lot more to share. Um, um, just some pieces of advice to give to you as you come into your role. And so that's kind of the purpose of this portion. And so first up, we have our regional affairs director position. Um, so Gerardo Chavez, he is the current regional affairs director for region nine. Um, he's also our incoming um, president, but he did serve as regional affairs director for the past year. And so he is here to present to you on the regional affairs director position. So with that, I will pass it to you, Gerardo. Take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Emma. Can we go to the next slide, please? All right, so uh, talking about regional affairs. Um, so the regional affairs director is the leader of the region and the go-to person uh, regarding any matters pertaining to the region. So uh, the leader means that you will be chairing uh, the region delegate assembly uh, and you will also be chairing the executive board meeting. Uh, so you are working with delegates one-on-one, -on -one, but you're also working with uh, the executive board members one-on-one. -on -one. And that really ties in with the term go-to person. Um, you are the leader, therefore people will be asking you questions and they will be asking you for advice, for feedback. Uh, for example, like if you're working with your communications officer, uh, the communications officer could approach you and ask you, hey, does, this, does, does the newsletter look good? Uh, what should I add in the newsletter? Or if you're working with your vice chair or whoever's taking your minutes, uh, they will approach you and ask you, are the minutes okay? Uh, is there anything else that I should be adding? Uh, for delegates, they're gonna be asking you, so what is my role as a delegate? That's the number one question that you're gonna get in July. What is my role as a delegate? What do I do? Uh, whenever advisors, SBA presidents, delegates are reaching out, they're gonna reach out to you. So you're gonna walk through them uh, the delegate verification process. You're going to onboard the onboard uh, the delegates, uh, get them familiar with their uh, with their role within the organization, uh, but also attending SBA meetings. Uh, that's going to play a critical role in activating your colleges. So that is where the term "go to person." Uh, also, whenever you know I approach you or the VPRA is going to approach you, asking you about the region, uh, you are responsible for your region. So. Uh, that comes with a lot of responsibility. You need to be aware of what's going on in your region. If there's an issue pertaining to a legislative bill that is going on, um, and one of your assembly members, you know, it's, uh, you know, is playing a critical role, uh, it's not just the role of the legislative affairs director to know, it's your role because it is your region, or you're having problems with a, with a college uh, with activation, uh, it is up to you to also be aware. So, uh, Keep in mind, you are the chair of the region. Uh, you are responsible of leading it. That comes with a lot of responsibility, but you'll learn along the way. Um, and then there are a lot of priorities uh, as a regional affairs director that you will have to consider. Uh, the number one, above all else, uh, that is ingrained in our, in our pillars, you heard it, uh, is obtaining full college activation. It is very important that as a regional affairs director that your main objective is to make sure that you have delegates attending your meetings. Because if you don't have delegates, you don't have a meeting. Um, so that's gonna require reaching out. That's gonna require explaining 
the SSCCC to a lot of people. So uh, one of them, our main objectives in, in July, August, uh, those first few months is getting you familiar with the structure of organization. So you're able to explain it to delegates. So you're able to explain it to student trustees, uh, SB presidents, advisors. Um, and that is how you obtain a full college activation. Um, the VPR is gonna work with you uh, on how to activate them, uh, how to properly uh, verify that the individual is a college delegate. Also exchange best practices within neighboring colleges. Uh, believe it or not, the, delegate, uh, the region delegate assembly setting is a place where delegates exchange ideas. It is such a rich place for delegates to come in, get new ideas on how they can engage their students with their student government. I saw in my region where, uh, you know, a delegate brought an idea on how they're going to engage their students in elections or civic engagement or, uh, you know, implementing uh, one of our resolutions, uh, for example, like menstrual equity, like our College of the Desert delegate did an amazing job in um, bringing in uh, one of our toolkits and implementing that. Um, and that also inspired other delegates to do the same. So. Um, your role as a regional affairs director is to make sure that you're creating an area and a space where delegates are able to exchange information and be a support of each other. Um, because although you have a lot of colleges, they're not competing against each other. It is not a competition. It is a place where we're able to share information and uplift each other. Also establishing an effective, effective executive board. As the chair, you are responsible of your team. Uh, that comes with accountability, making sure that your, your team is doing their work, but also uh, training them, uh, training them, making sure that they know what they're doing, making sure that uh, they're going to their meetings. Holding beneficial delegate assembly, that's going back to the same uh, point uh, in number two, um, making sure that your delegate assemblies are sparking conversations, that the delegates are able to walk out of your meeting with something to bring to their college. And ensuring that your region serves as a strong support system, that is very valuable. That you are making yourself, that you're making the executive board, the region as a whole, available for colleges to consider as support. Uh, let's say like you have a college that needs help with the resolution, that is why you're there. Um, and that is the role of the regional affairs director on the regional level. However, there's also another level, the state level, as the regional first director is serving as a member of the board of directors. Uh, so you will be attending our monthly meetings, uh, the board of directors meeting, uh, and we, you know, we travel to different cities. Um, and then within that meeting, uh, you must submit a monthly regional affairs director report. And that is how we hold everyone accountable. We wanna make sure that, you know, we wanna know what you're doing in that month. Uh, you know, you're receiving compensation. So that is, uh, that is the way that you receive compensation. You don't turn in your report, you know, you get deducted, you turn in your report, you get your compensation. Um, so that is a tool of accountability, but also making sure that you're being transparent to your constituents, letting them know that you are working. Next slide, please. So throughout the year, please keep this in mind. As soon as you meet with your executive board, uh, with your executive board and your delegate assembly, the number one thing that you should keep in mind and that you should bring is set dates for your meetings. There's nothing worse than figuring it out along the way, sending out doodle polls along the way. Doodle poll is great. When to me is great but it's gonna get tedious along the way. So it's better to, you know, bring it to the, bring it to the table, talk about when do we wanna meet throughout the year? So we have consistency, people know when to show up and you're gonna have higher retention rate and you're gonna meet quorum. Don't be afraid of delegate tasks. It's very important because you're gonna notice that you're gonna have a lot of work and you have an executive board team to work with. They don't work for you, but you work with them. So for example, you, don't, uh, you, you want to reach out to a college, you can work with your vice chair, have them reach out to them or, or delegate uh, dates for the executive board to um, visit SBA, SBAs uh, or like any side projects you wanna have a town hall. Destiny certain tasks to different people. 
Um, at, after all, you know, this is a place where, you know, we are working together. Um, and you shouldn't really take everything to um, just for yourself because you're going to get burned out. And um, that is a great leadership quality to have to delegate tasks. Hold your executives accountable. It's very important that you hold your executives accountable. Be friendly, but don't be friends. Be friendly. Uh, at the end of the day, this is a professional setting. So uh, set, um, setting accountability means setting goals. You know, meet with your executive board, ask, so what do we want to achieve? What do we want to do this year? What goals should we set? Also set deadlines. You have a, uh, you know, a newsletter coming up. Set a deadline. We're going to send it out this day. We're going to finish this day. Um, minutes, we're going to send it out this day. So please make sure that when you're meeting with your executive board members, set goals and set deadlines so you have a productive year. And then lastly, set up bi-weekly or monthly check-ins with your delegates, with your regional officers. Um, you know, we meet in a virtual setting and sometimes we don't have that one-on-one -on -one connection. Um, and it's always great to just set some time in your calendar for them to talk to you and, you, and for you to talk to them and uh, really get to know them. Uh, see where areas are you able to support them. Um, and that is just a setting for you to get to know them on a more personal level. Uh, so please keep this in mind as you're stepping into your role as a regional affairs director. Uh, I'll be around next year. Feel free to reach out to your predecessor. Uh, we have a VPRA and we're here to support you. So even though in the, in the beginning you're going to feel lost, uh, that's normal. But along the way, you're going to get the hang of it. Thank you. Yes, that's definitely true. Thank you, Gerardo. All right, so I hope that served as a good introduction to the role of the Regional Affairs Director. Um, we'll be now moving into the role of the Vice Chair. And so to talk to us about the Vice Chair position today is Tristan Vu. He is a Vice Chair for Region 8. And I'll go ahead and pass it to you. Hi, everyone. Can you see me? I am, as Emma said, I'm the Vice Chair for Region 8. Um, I just, and I wanted to, um, introduce some of your responsibilities and also some advice and experience that I've had um, being the current vice chair uh, for the 2021 term. Next slide, please. So some of the primary duties of the vice chair is that we support the executive board. That would be the RAD, the LAD, the treasurer, and the communications officer. Um, that's a very broad expectation. But what that really means is that as vice chairs, our role is very flexible and very malleable. Um, at any point, we can be expected to um, represent our constituents in any of these meetings that our executive board is expected to sit at. And that means that we get to participate in some of the widest varieties of activities that happens at the SSCCC. Um, I suggest that as that for our future vice chairs, we take that um, to heart and that we try and participate in all of these opportunities that are allowed to us as much as we can. We are also uh, specifically to vice chairs responsible for system activities within the region. So um, we are there to make sure that our delegates are accountable, uh, that the committee membership and reports for our officers and our delegates are taken and that they're managed properly. And that's really important in keeping system affairs afloat because oftentimes when we transition from regional work to state work, delegates can be left behind. They can feel like they're out of the loop. And it's our organization and our maintenance of these communicative avenues that ensures that these delegates who want to be activists and who want to be advocates can do the work that the SSCCC has for them and needs them to do. We're also fortunate enough for the 21, 22 term and beyond to be on the statewide internal affairs committee. And as Catherine said, this is a committee that is just for vice chairs. And it's something that we are responsible for in its entirety. 
And what that means um, specifically for internal affairs is that we get to decide um, on a lot of the policy that happens uh, within the SSCCC. For example, right now, I'm fortunate enough to be on an IAC committee work group that focuses on um, the policy governing how the SSCCC is to recognize religious events and holidays. And it's these types of things that vice chairs have um, that we can look to and that we can work on that is one of our own. Specifically on the regional level, we also have our own internal affairs committee that we get to chair ourselves. And that um, allows us to set regional policy and um, invite delegates to be a part of something in the SSCCC that's a little bit different from the lobby, lobbying and activism that we do on a statewide level. Uh, we get to be part of this um, more bureaucratic, um, almost an, an executive process that is that differentiates itself a lot from what the SSCCC SSCCC usually does. And this is really a lot of things that the vice chairs are expected to do. Um, it's a lot of responsibilities and it can seem daunting at first. But uh, for a word of advice to all of you incoming vice chairs, I really suggest that you guys reach out and foster these deep and personable connections with your executive board with the vice chairs of the other regions and especially with the executive committee. Because really all of us in the SSCCC, I really do feel like um, we are partners working towards the singular goal of advocating for the students. We don't want each other to fail and we want to make sure that we are each doing our best in performing our duties so that we can serve students at their at our best. So um, don't be afraid to develop these working relationships where you can really be able to take advantage of your role. As well, um, as vice chairs, we, we have, we're fortunate enough to have our own committee, but it doesn't mean that we are precluded from being a part of the other committee work that others in the SSCCC is able to do. I've been involved in a lot of committees that have come out of um, the RAC, and I've also been involved in legislative efforts that are usually the responsibilities of LADS. And it's, and I really think that it's because of my position and, and having the flexibility that I do as a vice chair that has given me the opportunity to do these things. So even though they're outside of our expected responsibilities, we have um, an unparalleled amount of flexibility to do everything that we may want to do um, and that the SSCCC has offered to our students and student leaders. And I think that's all for me. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Tristan, for your presentation. Um, I'm really looking forward to the Internal Affairs Committee to see what they do next year. Um, I'm really looking forward to, if you're an incoming vice chair, you really have something to look forward to. Um, that's something brand new to the SSCCC. So yeah, with that, we'll go ahead and move into our next regional officer. This is the Legislative Affairs Director. We have Jasmine Prasad. Um, she is also the incoming Vice President of Legislative Affairs. She has served as a Legislative Affairs Director for the past year for Region 2. So with that, I'll pass it to Jasmine. Thanks, Emma. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? Um, so Legislative Affairs Director and what your roles are on the regional level, um, that's facilitating communication with government representatives within your region, um, including district offices and statewide officials. So it's really important that you build that connection with them early on and just meet with them, introduce yourself, um, because you know as a lad, you will be doing a lot of lobbying to legislators. So it's really important that they kind of know who you are in advance and you already have that connection where um, it's a lot more flowing through the conversations of whatever bill or um, topic you are lobbying on. Disseminate and communicate all um, permanent legislative and policy information to the region. 
So during delegate assembly and of course your legislative affairs committee, you will be giving um, legislative updates. A lot of the times you'll be taking the information discussed during the statewide legislative affairs committee and just relaying it back to your region. Um, preside over all meetings of the legislative affairs committee in your region. So there you'll of course be the chair on the regional level, um, make the agenda, appoint a vice chair who will help you with minutes. Um, again, start brainstorming ideas to implement lobbying in your region, what kind of day you wanna do it, what works with everyone's schedule, having one in the fall and spring semester because spring semester is very busy in the legislative cycle. Engage community college students um, within your region in legislative policy advocacy. So it's very important when you do schedule meetings with legislators that you have direct constituents. So that means students from their college because legislators are more um, you know, open to listening to what you have to say and most likely voting in favor if you do have a student from that college that they represent because they can see their own constituents concerns since we vote for them um, in the elections. Next slide, please. Okay, um, on the statewide level, which is really fun in my opinion, you get to serve as a voting member on the statewide board of directors. Um, so as a rad and lad, as mentioned earlier, you are a board member. So um, as a collective board, you know, you make decisions that are very important to community college students. Um, being a lad is extremely important because a lot of those decisions sometimes are, you know, policy change, education change, bill ideas. So it's very important to pay attention and take notes when it does pertain to legislative activity or even education code change. Um, serve as a voting member for the statewide legislative affairs committee. Also really important because we take action and stances on a lot of the bills that we will be discussing in the upcoming cycle. Um, so we have this legislative matrix, we research it and do reports that are gonna be given back to the committee. And you guys as a whole decide whether or not you wanna sponsor it, um, support it high, medium or low, and what kind of um, advocacy efforts we wanna to put towards the bill in the legislative cycle. And we implement resolutions that are passed through the SSCCC General Assembly. So during the first couple meetings, we're going to establish our priorities and brainstorm ideas to get you know bills um, authored by assembly members of senators pertaining to what the students felt were a priority to them in their college and the students as a whole. A lot of the resolutions this year kind of deal with. Um, education code changes, and some of them are already in the legislative cycle, which is really nice because if those pass, it's a little less work for us and we can focus more on the um, harder education code changes and bills. Um, and then lastly, you are a liaison between the VPLA and um, you coordinate capital advocacy, potential uh, meetings with system holders and stake part, uh, stakeholder partners. Um, it's really important that, you know, we maintain the relationship with our system partners just because they help us tremendously when it comes to um, figuring out where to begin with our bill process and who might be a perfect author for it. Sometimes they'll ask us to participate in legislative webinars. So it's really important um, that we continue to maintain that relationship and um, just bring updates to the Legislative Affairs Committee is really important too, because it lets me know where you guys need help as well as um, what areas to work with. That's it, thank you. All right, thank you so much, Jasmine. And yes, being a Legislative Affairs Director is definitely a lot of work, but it's very um, worthwhile work. Um, legislative Affairs Directors do a lot of amazing work. All right, thank you again, Jasmine. Um, we're gonna go ahead and move into our next officer, which is the treasurer position. And for the treasurer position today, we have Inderpol Dhaliwal. He is the current treasurer for region two. So whenever you're ready, you have the floor. Thank you, VPRA. Hey everyone, my name is Inderpol Dhaliwal and I am the current treasurer for region two. Um, so I kind of want to go over the duties of being a treasurer. So one of the biggest things of being a treasurer is, um, sorry if the lighting is terrible. One of the biggest things for being a treasurer is um, working with the executive board. Um, you have to communicate with your RAD and you have to work on any projects that are given by the executive board. Um, so the next biggest thing is uh, you have to be very responsible of your allocations. With the new AP, uh, AP 1504 funding, uh, many previous treasurers from this current year have created budgets for their regions. Um, 
as a, the next upcoming treasurer, you have to be uh, responsible for adjustments, allocations, and balancing the money of your, your region's given money. Be sh make sure to uh, all activity all activities within the executive board follow the statewide financial fundraising policy and your budgets. So your budgets will state um, all of the where the money is going to be allocated and what they can be used for. And in any moment, if say that if your delegates uh, like your executive board, your delegates want to expand on what that uh, like where those allocations can go, you first need to communicate with your rad communicate with the VPF or and then make sure that aligns with the statewide policy and then you can change then within the your own region's delegate assembly you can change uh, your guys's uh, budget so next thing as a treasurer you're going to be having to chair and have an active voice within um, certain meetings you will also be a voting member in a lot of these meetings. So the very first thing is you're going to be chairing a the internal finance committee. Um, I put this on top of the list because this, even though um, a lot of the times you can or you are allowed to work on events and fundraisers as a treasurer without having an internal finance committee, it's really important to start delegating uh, tasks to your delegates. Actually, um, so so. To get that internal regional uh, internal finance committee, it basically allows your delegates within from each college to participate in what a fundraiser will look like for that region, what they want to see in that fundraiser or that event, right? Uh, the next big thing is you are a voting member in your executive meeting. Like I said before, you'll be needing to communicate with your rad, your lad, your uh, your vice president or your vice vice chair and your comms officer on any projects that are going on. Go into the executive committee uh, meetings and work on those projects and help decide what would be great for the region. And the next big thing for a treasurer is the Regional Finance and Fundraising Committee. You will be a voting member. Um, this is where a lot of what statewide happens, all the statewide finance uh, issues and problems are resolved. And this is a huge part for you to stand up and give a great voice on what you think needs to be heard and seen um, at a statewide level. So. Uh, the next thing I want to go over, and this goes for almost any position, is bringing emphasis to your work. So with anything you need to know, uh, like for me, it was um, I wanted what change in advocacy I wanted to bring to my position was mental health and spreading discrimination. Right. So uh, this is what makes your work limitless. Br putting emphasis on your work allows you to do so much more with your position. So. With that, I created. I started. Uh, I created an event. It was in a fundraiser where we had speakers for mental health and spreading discrimination. And this is something that I was really proud of. And this is something as a treasurer you can do within your region. Lastly, is balancing your life. You have to balance your professional work. This is huge. Have a calendar. Match it with the SSCCC's calendar. Match it with your school's calendar, your academic life. Make sure those align so that you will have a good month, so that you won't be strafing off and having issues. Communicate with your RAD if there's anything they need to be working on. That's one I'm going to keep repeating that part is because your RAD is they have a lot on their plate, but you need to collaborate with them. You need to communicate what you're doing and what they need from you. Uh, lastly, I'm a huge supporter of personal life, so make sure you're taking care of yourself and always give yourself some time. Um, and that'll be it. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Interpol. All righty. Let me unspotlight you. All right. So for our last regional officer we have today, we have Jack Hill. He is a communications officer. He's done a great job. And um, he is here to speak to you on the position of communications officer. So with that, I give you the floor. Right, thank you, Emma, I really appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Like BPRA just said, my name is Jack Kill. I'm the communications officer for Region 1. And I just wanna go over three basic things that I think are super important to remember and implement as a communications officer in just promoting the well-being of commun communications within your region. So if we could move to the next slide, slide, please. Awesome, thank you. So the first thing that I think is most important is something I call the three Ps, and those are being prompt, being persistent, and being precise. So with promptness, when you figure out when your delegate meeting is, you are responsible for disseminating that information to the delegates. So as soon as you know the meeting and you are done collaborating with your RAD, contact your delegates and tell them so they have time to prepare 
and um, just get ready for those meetings. The next is being persistent. I know, especially with my region where, where there really isn't a lot of delegate activity and a lot of our colleges are inactive, that sometimes delegates like aren't as reliable as we need them to be. So you need to be contacting them consistent or persistently so you they can attend the meetings that you guys schedule. Because without delegate attendance, you can't have a meeting and you can't serve your students, which is the central goal of any officer on the executive board. And the next is being precise. Be, this is kind of a no brainer, but I still think it's important to emphasize you need to be precise on where the meeting is, when it is, and how long it's going to take because delegates have other things going on in their lives and they can't just be at the whims of the executive officers like, oh, it's good. It, we can't say how long it might be. No, they just have things to do. I need to know how long it's going to be. And honestly, delegates are really going to appreciate that because it's going to allow them to plan ahead and just overall have a better attitude towards meetings because I know sometimes like people get angry if meetings go over time so be precise on meeting times dates and locations the next big part of being a communications officer is social media and newsletters so as a communications officer you will be producing all the regional social media through either Instagram or Snapchat or Facebook whatever mode generally it's through Instagram but you can also do it through other platforms. And you'll also be creating a monthly newsletter where you just detail what happened within your region um, within the last month. So the first big thing pertaining to these two topics is collaborate with your region's delegates. When you collaborate with your delegates, not only do you get new ideas, but you also involve your delegates in the process and that makes them feel more involved in what the region is overall doing. It, it's really important that they feel involved or else they don't engage and ultimately they have no more interest in being a delegate because they just aren't engaging in anything and they aren't getting any time to show what they can do and social media and newsletters is a great way to get their feedback so the next part with social media newsletters is canva canva is going to be your best friend as a uh, communications officer, it's a great tool. It's essentially a site where you can curate all your social media posts. They have great templates and it's a really just great place to design social media and your newsletters. So be fluent with Canva and it's gonna enhance the quality of all your social media posts and newsletters. But the most important part about social media and newsletters is have fun. Um, it's a great way to access a, create, a creative side of you. I know um, not everybody is creative. I will per uh, personally attest that I am not creative whatsoever, but it's super fun to just try and access that side of yourself, I guess. And social media and newsletters is what you will be doing. And you are going to have to be creative um, when you're curating all your social media posts and newsletters. If we can move to the next slide. That'd be great. Awesome, thank you. And lastly, another big important part about communications officer is minutes. You will be taking minutes, most likely. Sometimes it's the vice chair because they vice chair, they are the um, vice chair of the meeting and the grad might just want them to take the minutes, but generally it is the comms officer and there's some important things to know about when you're doing your minutes. So firstly, just detail actions and discussions and provide context to what discussions are about, but do not write paragraphs. Be con uh, concise and succinct. When people go back and read our minutes, they do not want to go read through mountains of information. They just want short, quick things that summarize what went on, but it's still important to provide that context. So do not write too little, but be succinct and con concise. Secondly, always set the minutes as pending until the next meeting. Meeting uh, Minutes are not Formal, formally verified until they are approved at the next delegate assembly. So always set them at pending until they are approved by the next delegate assembly. It's very important to do that. Thirdly, always place the minutes in the regional Google Drive. Each region has their own Google Drive and it, that's where all the region's documents are stored. So the public can come and look at them. 
when they want to know what happened in the meeting. And fourth, prepare minute documents before the meeting. It is super important that you get the information out before, like Brown Act stipulates that minutes or the agenda, excuse me, must be provided um, to the public 72 hours in advance of the meeting. It's a state law and you have to follow it. It's super important. But also it's just good to have the minutes ready so you aren't scrambling around once the meeting begins. So that's all for minutes. But my advice to incoming comms officers would be ask questions. For me personally, I put a lot of emphasis on this because this is my first time ever being in the SSCCC and I was very just not knowledgeable of what the SSCCC was and what my duties were. But I can per personally attest that every person within the SSCCC is more than willing and more than happy to assist you. I've made some actual good friends through this organization just because they wanted to help me. So please, please ask questions. It's not always just about figuring out what you want to do. It's also about meeting people and people want to meet you in this organization. So that's all I have to say about communications officers. Have fun with this position and you guys are all going to do great. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Jack. Yeah, I think that's a great piece of advice. Always ask questions. We're all here to help. Um, and on that note, I think it provides a good transition. Um, before we move out of this um, regional officer position, I just kind of wanted to do a quick slide on, you know, who to contact um, as a regional officer. If you do have these questions, you know, that Jack is talking about, um, of course, you could ask your fellow communications officer if you're a communications officer, but there are instances where maybe you are all new when you don't know the answer to your questions. So um, I just kind of want to give you a point of contact of who to ask questions to when you are unsure about something. So if you are a regional affairs director, um, you should contact the vice president of regional affairs. The vice president of regional affairs will be chairing the regional affairs committee, which you will be going to about every two weeks. And the incoming vice president of regional affairs is Brianna Ross. So um, keep in mind that that's her name. That's who she is. Contact her if you have any questions. Um, the email for Vice President of Regional Affairs is just vpra at studentsenateccc.org. Um, I will be having, since I'm the current VPRA, I will have that email until about June 30th. But as of July 1st, um, it will be Bri Brianna again. You're, you're welcome to ask me a question um, up until June 30th. But as of July 1st, that will be Brianna. And then if you are a vice chair, your point of contact will be the vice president as the vice president will be chairing the internal affairs committee um, that both Tristan and Catherine mentioned earlier. And so um, the incoming vice president will be Jean Gaetau and that email will be VP at studentsenateccc.org. So that will be your point of contact. And then for our incoming legislative affairs directors, your point of contact is the vice president of legislative affairs. They chair the legislative affairs committee that meets about every two weeks also. And that will be J Jasmine Prasad, who you just heard from a few minutes ago. And her email will be vpla at studentsenateccc.org. And then treasurers, you're, you will want to ask the vice president of finance. And so this email will be vpf at studentsenateccc.org. And that will be FISA. She will be the incoming VPF for the income for the next term. So feel free to reach out to her if you have any questions. And then for communications officer, you will have the vice president of communication. This will be Aunt Angelica, Angelica Campos. Um, and that email will be vpc at studentsenateccc.org. So these are your um, five plus the president um, executive officers of the SSCCC. And just remember that they are here to help you. Don't be afraid to reach out to them. Um, they will always um, make time to help you out. And also, if you have any questions regarding the board of directors, um, you can reach out to the president as the president does chair the board of directors meetings. So I just wanted to provide those points of context before wrapping up the regional officer portion of this webinar. And um, we'll now transition to our next portion, um, which will be working with your region. So for this, we have Henry Gardner. He's the current regional affairs director for region eight. Um, he's going to be talking about, you know, just how to work with your executives within your executive board at the regional level and how to work with delegates also, since something that all the regional officers have in common is that they will all be working with delegates as they are 
um, the main spokespeople of the SSCCC, you know, we really want to hear from the delegates as they represent their colleges. So um, I will go ahead and pass it to Henry. All right, everybody probably thought we were about to finish, but we are almost done. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm going to be your guide through a couple of the conceptual items for today. Uh, so if we can move on to the next slide, I will go through this um, promptly. Um, so a couple of points here. We have conflict resolution, teamwork, and community development. Uh, conflict resolution and effective communication are very key points as you move through any position, uh, and you'll be sure to notice that when you're in yours as well. Uh, when it comes to conflict resolution, you really want to utilize these tools and, and the kind of methods of acting in order to avoid a bunch of extra strife that you may have throughout the year um, in terms of any sort of conflict. This may be a minor conflict, could be a major conflict, but the important thing is um, when you actually have this sort of conflict, if you cannot resolve it interpersonally, which is always preferred, the, the best way to go about it is to complain up, not out. And now it's been kind of mentioned earlier about these ways of communication, the methods of communication, our organizational structure. But if you're a regional officer and you have a trouble with another regional officer, go to your RAD. If you have trouble with your RAD, you go up from there. You go up to the VPRA, you go up to the vice president, you go up to the president, et cetera. Um, and that way you keep things uh, flatlined, you keep things kind of stable, you don't have any drama buildup, uh, and you kind of keep things uh, in, in straight lines of communication. And this kind of also plays, plays into the communication aspect of things as well. Uh, which to avoid all this, I mean, one of the best things you can do, as mentioned earlier in the regional officers, I think Jack mentioned a lot uh, in his own communications officer uh, presentation, uh, it's important to let people know what you're doing. It's important to talk to people and to, to work with them um, more effectively and, and kind of letting them know what's going on in your life, letting them know what, what's going on with you. Uh, and that way uh, you and your region can work better together. And that kind of plays into teamwork and task allocation. You are not alone. You are not alone as an officer, you're not alone as a rad, you're not alone as a lad or anything else. So it's important to work together as a team within your region. It's important to look at the tasks as kind of a, as a unified effort to get done as you talk with your delegates, as you work with them to activate colleges, to, to kind of encourage them to be more active themselves. Uh, these tasks are a lot to take on. And especially as a community college student, if you're taking on work and college and this at the same time, it's important to know your boundaries. So when it comes to being working as a regional officer or as a rad know when it's time to either delegate tasks or ask uh, for that task to be kind of taken off you uh, if you need help with that it's important to reach out uh, and most people i would say hopefully everybody uh, is very willing to work with you on that because we're all in this together as we work through this um, but the most important thing while keeping this era of professionalism uh, as gerardo mentioned earlier uh, be friendly but not a friend um, it is important to keep people accountable to that as well. So keep that in mind as you move through your role throughout the year, uh, but also at the same time for community development and support, uh, it's important to have fun. I think Jack said it as well. Uh, it's important to kind of build up interpersonal relationships with you uh, and your other executive board members, as well as your delegates. Uh, one way of doing this is to, of course, meet with them bi-weekly, as mentioned by Gerardo, but, or, or monthly. But the important thing is, is that you really want to build a community within your region you don't want your region to just simply be, go to a delegate assembly, take information back. You want them to feel a personal connection. That's how you get people to come back in future years. That's how you get people to get engaged. That's how you get people to change their perspectives uh, and to actually develop themselves as their own leaders. Uh, it's how you keep people active throughout the year. So what's important here is that when you go into your role, you are the starting position for your region you are the person who is going to have to build that community up from scratch, be it with the help of your others, if, you're, if you have other members in your executive board or, or, or by yourself, in which case you have the support of your vice presidents. But the important thing here is when you build up these regional connections and these support systems and these lines of support, uh, you start developing some institutional memory and some institutional connections and networks that will last long beyond your role in your, and your responsibility this next year. Uh, so keep that in mind as you move through. These are some three basic things. You guys will all be trained on these more effectively and more extensively uh, over the next couple of months, I am sure. Uh, however, for now, I will hand it back off to our uh, lovely Vipari McNellis uh, to go into Q&A. So there you go, Emma. All right. Thank you so much for your presentation, Henry. That was perfect. All righty. So like you said, we will now go into our Q&A portion of the webinar. So please feel free if you have any questions, put them in the chat, um, ask, ask to be recognized. Um, I can go you if you want to say your question verbally. 
Um, so yeah, I'll just gonna, I'm just gonna open up, open it up for a few minutes to see if anyone has any questions. All right, so I have one question from Jessica. She asks, um, how do we bring the student trustees into the fold? I think this is a really good question. Um, I think maybe a rad would like to take this on or does any, any, any presenters wanna take this on? Uh, Gerardo, rad nine, go ahead. Sure, I'll, I'll try to answer that question to my best that I can. Uh, student trustees are very important, especially when it comes to uh, lobbying to legislators. Um, so one way that you can bring them into the fold is actually having one-on-ones with them. So as soon as you step into your into your role, identify who is the student trustee. Get their either their um, student email or a phone number, and then try to get in contact with them. Um, get into a meeting with them, and uh, you know explain to them what is the SSCCC. Uh, also invite them to join the Student Trustee Caucus so they can stay more connected with the SSCCC because uh, sometimes it is you're going to need them to join you to into um, you're going to need them to join you to a legislative visit or maybe you're going to need them to be an ally when you are advocating for for something in their campus. Uh, so just having that connection with them, meeting with them regularly um, would would actually you know kind of bring them more on board with the organization. Thank you, Gerardo. Yeah, I think that's a great, great answer. Were there any other presenters who wanted to answer that question? All right, not hearing any. Um, Jessica, I hope that answered your question. Um, yeah, awesome. All right, so I something else to add on that, you know, not just student trustees, but you know, the presidents of the colleges, the advisors, you really want to create that kind of relationship, like Gerardo said, um, with all of those, all of those people in the SBAs. Um, that way, like he said, if you ever need someone for a legislative visit or anything along those lines, um, you have those kind of contacts already ready. Um, so yeah, I think that's a really good point that Gerardo made. All right, were there any other questions? Don't be shy. We were all here a year ago. I'll give it about like 30 more seconds, see if we get another question. All right, I see one from Zachariah. Uh, what are the best ways to involve SBAs in identifying the needs of community college students in our region? That is a great question. Um, any presenters want to take that one? Chair? Uh, yeah, Jack, go for it. Yeah, I can take that one. Um, so really the best way is to communicate with your delegate. Your delegate is the outlet uh, for your college and for your SBA to engage with the region. So prioritize delegate information. And if you don't have a delegate, then contact the SBA advisor, the SBA president. Never, do not try, or I guess it'd be the other way around. Make sure your SBA contacts either the RAD or the whatever officer there is, like their information is on the SSCCC website to be contacted and they are always receptive to all information and they want to prioritize the voices of students. So they are gonna always be receptive to anything that the SBA may have to say and really just prioritize that communication. It is listed on the SSCCC website, but yeah, that's what I would have to answer that question. Awesome, thank you, Jack. That's a great answer. Are there any other presenters who wanted to answer that? Um, I can kind of answer that too. So as a route in the lab, I know with my region, um, what Jen and I did was we did delegate one-on-ones, which is very helpful because during that time, you can always ask delegates like, 
hey, what's important to your college? Um, what are some priorities you guys are focusing on? And the more you have delegate assemblies and you go through the one-on-ones, you kind of realize like what the priorities are within the region. And I don't know how to describe it. I think as a lot, it just kind of comes naturally because without even thinking about it, when somebody like once asked me, oh, like, what is region two priorities? I was able to just list it without like somebody giving me direct answers right away. And then also, Sakuraya, I know you're going to be allowed because you're my successor. Um, you know, during your legislative affairs committee, you can always ask as well, like, you know, what are some priorities that you guys feel are important? Um, just listing that out ahead of time would be very beneficial, especially when um, scheduling ledge visits because you know what bills to advocate for within your region and to really get students engaged. So that's from the legislative side. Yeah, that's definitely good advice. Yeah, delegate one-on-ones have definitely been helpful. Um, that's for sure. I think that's a good one. Any other answer for this question? All right, not hearing any more. I hope that answered your question. Um, we'll go ahead and go to the next one, which is from Jessica again. Um, how do we gauge student interests within our region? to know what topics are most important to them. I think that's similar um, to the last one where you can have delegate one-on-ones, ask the delegates. Um, were there any other um, answers that we have for this one, Gerardo? Uh, one way to make sure that uh, you are gauging student interests is by visiting student body associations, um, going to their meetings and hearing their conversations. Sometimes that dialogue that they're having within their meetings will give you a sense of, you know, where are they leaning towards in certain issues, but also give you a sense of what are they prioritizing. So when you're engaging with them, you know what, what topics to cover and what topics that will actually allow them to get more interested in, in engaging with the SSCCC. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Gerardo. All right, any other answers for that one? All right, we'll go move to the next one, which is from Olivia. She asks, how do or how can vice chairs advocate for an issue that they strongly want to advocate for while in their position as a vice chair? Anyone want to take this one? Oh, I can definitely take this one. Perfect. Hi. Um, so I would say, from, from my perspective, um, I think there's really two ways that vice, care, vice chairs can really advocate for um, the issues that are important to us and important to our students as well. Um, primarily is in our vice chair committees. So in the internal affairs committee in um, on both the regional and statewide level, um, there's often an opportunity for us to go into how um, how the SSCCC is going to um, deal with matters pertaining to issues that may be important to you. So how we are how we may remain culturally sensitive to um, certain aspects that students often care about. But I think more importantly, when it comes to legislative or advocacy related things, it's about putting ourselves out there. Um, the bulk of the work that I've done advocating for students have been in work groups that have come from the RAC or the Regional Affairs Committee. And while that was once a committee that vice chairs um, were formally a part of, it doesn't mean that we are banned from attending them, even in the capacity that we do now. Um, a lot of work groups specifically mention um, vice chair participation. And so I encourage you to attend all of these meetings and make sure that you're present so that your voice um, can be heard and so that you can attend um, these work groups where we do the work of advocacy and, and making sure that um, the issues of students are heard and addressed by the SSCCC. Yes, thank you, Tristan. Um, I would also add, um, you also have your internal affairs committee now too, where you will be able to be on the work groups there for that statewide committee. Um, any other answers for this question?
All right, not hearing any. Um, but yeah, also, I mean, another possible one where you can advocate for an issue is, you know, write a resolution. We have a resolution process. Um, you are a regional officer, but you can still write your own resolution. In fact, um, you will probably be very well trained on how to write a resolution um, throughout the year. So, you know, if you, um, that's one way to get it on our list of priorities um, as an organization. All right, and then the next question I see from Jessica, she asks, is there a list of policies the SSCCC or the regions are prioritizing? Um, she's asking so that um, we can look over them and become familiar with them. That's a really good question. Um, does anyone have an answer for that one? I got this. Um, so as a lot, um, we establish legislative priorities and a lot of those priorities come from the resolutions that were passed by um, students who are in community college or just students in general. Um, so during those resolutions, which everyone's passed, uh, we kind of focus on if it says pursue legislation, then we'll make that a priority and you know determine author and such. So we have a legislative priority packet and that goes in depth of you know what kind of priorities we focus on such as basic needs, COVID-19 relief, um, more financial aid. And then later on in the packet, we speak more in depth. Sorry, that's my dog sneezing. She has allergies. Um, we speak more in depth about what um, the priority is and how it pertains to students. You know, we talk about the statistics, um, how many students are affected by some of those priorities and why it's important. So we can drop that in the chat. Um, for you to take a look at. The new one for the 2021 to 2022 year has not been established yet because the committee has to approve it. So once July comes, you know, that will be the lax first business. Um, but we can definitely send the 2020 through 2021 priorities. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, could you put that in the chat, Jasmine? Or are you going to do that right now? Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. I hope that answers your question. Um, oh, wow. Okay, never mind. Gerardo already put it in. <laughs> Thank you, Gerardo. All right. Um, any other answers for that one? I think that mostly covered it. All right. So the next one I see is from Roy, who asks, will we meet our outgoing officers and incoming officers prior to our training next month? Um, would it behoove us to reach out to them prior to training or like to gauge what irons are in the fire um, that we can expect them to keep moving forward and any initiatives that were started last year that weren't finished so that they can continue them um, were there any answers for this one Okay, I guess I can take this if no one's going to um, speak on it, but for outgoing um, officers, again, sorry if you hear my dogs. So once you, you know, officially get elected into your term and everything, the outgoing officer whose position you're going to be taking over should be, um, you know, doing onboarding training, letting you know what has been happening within the region and just general um, information pertaining to your position because ideally, you know, we're giving you onboarding here, but we can't give you from a regional perspective because, you know, each region is different. They each had their own um, effort to, you know, complete an item or a task. So we can just give you the broad overview, but definitely meet with um, whoever, you know, position you're successing so they can give you more details of what work they wanted to complete within their region alone. Hopefully that answered your question. I can elaborate specifically for Region 8 as well. Um, so later on, um, closer to July, we'll also be doing our Region Officer onboarding. Um, and it's something that we will be continuously doing with you as your term goes on, just so that you guys, um, not just you and, and Shayla, but for all of our incoming Region Officers can be uh, more um, acquainted with um, the specificities of doing your job within Region 8 specifically. And also with your second question um, on what initiatives we're moving forward with, um, I, I think that you can look towards what we've been doing with the um, 
with RAC and the, the resolution toolkit, toolkit and ad hoc, where we were, um, we we're trying to implement some of the things that um, were passed in the previous terms resolution. But um, with, with how we're going to um, do the work in implementing what was established in this terms resolutions, that's probably going to be elaborated on further um, in the incoming REC meetings. Yep, exactly. All right, thank you. Thank you, Tristan. All right, were there any other questions from anyone on the line? All right. All right, I'm not seeing or hearing any more. I hope we got all your questions answered. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you do have any more, feel free to reach out to any of your presenters now who are here. Um, feel free to email any of the incoming executives. Um, we're all here to help. We all want to answer all your questions. Um, as you enter your term, you might come up with a lot more questions. So um, make sure to reach out. Um, like Jack said, ask those questions. Don't be afraid. Um, we're all here to help. All right, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and move into our just our last slide, you know, connect with us if you haven't already. Um, you are going to be a part of our organization. So, you know, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, so you can be more involved and you can be in the know of what's going on with the SSCCC at all times. Um, so these are just our ats, I guess you call them. Um, so yeah, feel free to follow us and share your experience. And, um, and yeah, thank you all for coming. Um, I wish you the best of luck in your positions this upcoming year. I'm sure you're all going to do great. Um, we appreciate you all just for coming, um, taking some time out of your Saturday. So thank you. Just thank you all. And good luck next year. <laughs>